Hey guys, so today I'm going to finish up my discussion on backup power for grid down situations. So I'm just going to do a quick summary, but stay tuned at the end. I've got an idea I think you might want to see. So let's get started. Okay, so we started off with a really tight budget of just 500 bucks. Got a small inverter generator, hooked it up with an extension cord, and running a whole day off about five gallons of gas. That outputs 1800 watts, and we could run our refrigerator or air conditioner, but not really at the same time. So we had to kind of play this game of swapping these in and out, and we can run, of course, the lights and fans and stuff. It's really quiet, clean sine wave. You can run your uh, sensitive electronics off of it, but it doesn't have 240, so you're not running your well pump or your uh, water heater. But this is, this is a really good solution that doesn't cost a lot to run. Then we bumped up to $1,000, got a bigger inverter generator, still with an extension cord. Now we're running maybe five to 10 gallons a day, double the wattage coming out, and that allowed us to run air conditioners and refrigerators, lights, all at the same time. Really quiet, we're still clean, sine wave, clean power. You can run your uh, sensitive electronics off of this. But we're still not 240 volts, we still can't run our well pump or water heater and the other big stuff. Then we took a look at a solar generator. This is a small one uh, running with extension cords. Now we're swapping gasoline for solar panels. This takes up to 200 watts of input, which isn't very much. Output 600 watts continuous and 1.4 kilowatt hour battery to work with. So now we're not really running big uh, air conditioners and refrigerators and stuff, maybe a small one for short periods of time, mainly for small electronics. Uh, the advantage here is that you can, you're can you not going to run out of gas, you can run this thing forever. Okay, then we moved up to $1,500 budget and we got a much larger gas generator, it's dual fuel actually. We started looking at tapping into our main panel with lockouts or transfer switches. Now we're running through significantly more gas per day, up to five of these, 20, 20 gallons a day, let's say. Or you could run off propane, bury a large tank, use the 20 pound tanks. But now we're all the way up at 9,500 watts continuous, 12,000 peak, and this thing's gonna run all your stuff and a lot of it even at the same time, except the big stuff. It is 240 volts, now we can run that well pump that gives us water, so that's a huge difference there. You can run the water heater and just really run a lot of stuff in your house. Uh, let's see, dual fuel, lots of power, yep. So the disadvantage now is that we're not on this clean sine wave. We've got dirty power and this isn't going to be good for those sensitive electronics. Uh, still in the $1,500 category, we looked at this PTO generator. It's kind of a special case for people on land who have a tractor and already storing diesel. This is a great solution for you guys. Uh, we can bring it in with that um, lockout or the transfer switch, tie it right into your main panel. You've got plenty of fuel to run this thing. Diesel lasts longer than gasoline. Um, 7,200 watts on this particular one is your continuous output. You can run all this stuff because it is um, 240 volts. So you got your water with your well pump. You got your water heater, your refrigerator, you can run all the stuff at the same time except for this big stuff. You might have to swap those out a little bit. Uh, multiple air conditioners. Uh, and this one, you got a much nicer alternator and you'll have clean power. It can run all your electronics on top of it. Of course, if you don't have a tractor, then this really isn't for you. And then we looked at the bigger solar generator, about five times bigger than the smaller one. $5,000 for this, the transfer switch, and 1,600 watts of solar to go with it. 3,600 watt output. Um, now you can run a window unit, your electronics, lights, fans, computers. Uh, after a while, you're down to whatever you can collect off of the panel. And it's, it's a fair amount of power, but not a ton, about six kilowatt hours a day. So not a bad solution. Um, by itself, you can't run the 240, but if you pair it with another one, a second one, you can split phase it. Then you could actually run your well pump and your water heater off of this.
multiple air conditioners, um, have you know 7,200 watts continuous and 7.2 kilowatt hour battery. I and mean, this is a significant solution now, but you're up around ten thousand dollars, which brings us to the high end stuff that we're going to talk about now. So for fourteen thousand dollars, we're jumping into a battery backed solar power system for the whole house. We're going to use lithium iron phosphate server rack mounted batteries. Uh, we're going to have all in one inverters and we're going to run all this power into our main panel with a transfer switch. We can back it up with however many panels we want up to 16,000 watts. But for $14,000 I spec'd out a system that gives you 13,000 continuous watts, that's two of these tied together, 15 kilowatt hours of battery and this will run you know a good chunk of your house for a long period of time so you can run your well pump because if you put two of these together you can split phase it to 240 you can run your water heater refrigerators freezers air conditioners mini splits most of the things in your house you can run and you can run most of it at the same time because you've got 13,000 watts to play with so 12240 it's solar rechargeable you'll never run out of gas with this system it'll run for 20 plus years that's clean power you can run your sensitive electronics no problem and you're running it all the time so it's going to pay for itself the only drawback is that this isn't a true transformer based system it does a high frequency switching with a lot of electronics and it probably won't handle the big inductive startup loads very well over a long period of time but I can't say for sure I don't own this system okay and then finally I took a look at the system that I installed six years ago myself uh, it's a DIY project for 32000 in hardware only. That includes no labor. I did it, all the labor myself. Uh, this is a really great bulletproof high-end system. And it'll do just about everything. Uh, runs into the house through a transfer switch. Uh, in my case, I put 13,000 watts of panels on there. That's a big chunk of that, 32K. This thing will output about 9,000 watts continuous. It has a really big peak startup watts so of double that, basically. And I've got a 15 kilowatt hour battery that's usable. Uh, this will run the heavy loads, the you know 120, 240, your well pumps, water heaters, refrigerators. This runs about 80% of my house every day. We run three air conditioners, um, pool pump, Computers, TVs, everything runs off of this all day long. Now, of course, it's solar rechargeable and it's clean power, pays for itself, and this uses the heavy duty transformer based type system. So it's a little extra money, but uh, remember, you also have 30% off of that. So really, I've got 22000 in this system after my tax credit. And this thing just runs like uh, bulletproof, man. It, I never have to touch it and it runs 80% of our house. Okay, finally, let's talk about the big idea. Okay, and that is basically if I were just starting out now, I would want to take maximum advantage of this 30% tax credit. So I would go out and build out the biggest, best system that I could imagine needing, and I would throw everything in the kitchen sink in on it, including generators, propane tanks, all, all the uh, transfer switches, conduits, wiring, every possible thing that you're going to need, I would throw it all in and call it, you know, the solar power system. So essentially you're kind of piggybacking some of these things that normally would not qualify by rolling them under a solar power system, right? Now, guys, this is not tax advice, and I have not read the bill, so I don't know if you can actually do that. But I do know that, in my mind, these are legitimate parts of a solar power system. You need a backup generator for when you have multiple days of no sun. So I think you have a leg to stand on in terms of this being a legit argument, but that doesn't mean the IRS is going to let you get away with it. So guys, uh, you got to follow the rules, but try and roll as much of this stuff in when you're building that system all at once and get that 30% off you know, instead of adding things later and paying full price. 
So I mean, you could build out a $23,000 system for only 16K here. That'll do just about everything you're ever gonna want. That's, I think that's what I would do. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you on the next one.